Hi guys, it's Amy Manson from the Clay and Metal Loft. We're gonna make these fun garden mushrooms today. So grab your bag of clay and your wood skewer that's in your set. And you're gonna, you need a towel, a little bowl of water. And you're gonna start by just tearing off a hunk of clay. And then between your hands, going ahead and squeezing it out. This is gonna be your first stem. You notice this is pretty big. Now, I this is going to be probably for my largest cap. I don't want these to be wimpy and breakable. So this you want to roll this to about an inch thickness. If you go smaller, you can get a little bit smaller. But you really do want this to hold up over time. I'm going to take my wood dowel and just give it some little texture. I'm just dragging that along. Almost looking like wood. I don't know. I haven't been mushroom hunting lately but just kind of giving it some cool look, some cool texture, then smoothing it out with a finger. And I'm gonna give it a little twist, a little bend, and let it dry that way. And then once it dries, it'll fire that way. They'll be kind of cute. So once I have that in the right shape, don't do too crazy, because the cap still has to kind of stay on there. Um, but go ahead and set it aside and grab a ball of clay. Squeeze it between your hands really well to make sure there's no air bubbles. And then you can start pounding it with your palms or rolling it into a ball. Whoop, whoop, camera, help, help. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so you've got your ball. You're gonna stick your thumb in the middle. And with a pinching action, looks like just like that, you're gonna move the bowl around, keep turning it around and pinching and thinning the walls. The goal is to get these walls about a quarter inch thick. Not too thin, not paper thin, but also not real super heavy duty. And you're trying to keep this, um, you know, it's basically just an upside down bowl, right? Now I'm accentuating mine. I like these fingerprints in mine. I, I'm, I don't like making these perfectly smooth. So I'm gonna take a finger and pop, just pop it in there. Now I don't have nails, so that's why this works. Um, you could take the back of a brush or something big, or a makeup brush, something, something there, a dowel, something that's gonna leave that texture. All right, and I've got my first mus mushroom cap. And it's gonna fit on there like that. All right, so next to the next stem, you guys can make these a little pointy on the end. Nothing sharp, nothing that's going to break, but it, something that might be a little tapered so it goes into the ground well. And I'm just tap, tap, tapping to give this some texture also. This is totally your preference. If you see some of the photos, some are just perfectly smooth. That's okay, too. Kind of keep an eye on your clay. You don't want to make all stems. You might just want to make a stem and then a cap, a stem and a cap, and a stem and a cap, so you know you have enough clay. Now this one I'm using my palm because I'm going to make this one a little less deep. It's going to be kind of a flat cap, just a little bit of a dome. So I started with my palm rather than my fingers, and I'm just pressing it out, thinning the edges, getting the clay out of that middle um, top section. And I can use, if you're at home, you can use the back of a wooden spoon. This helps thin the clay out too, and also helps smooth the surface. All right now on the inside of this, I'm gonna take my dowel and draw lines. I'm gonna come from the middle to the outside, trying to keep them equally distance. But this is going to kind of mimic that look of the underside of a mushroom cap. It's not exact, but it kind of mimics those lines. All right. You can leave these perfectly plain or go with some texture. Sometimes less is more, and it gives me the opportunity to do some really bright colors. 
this I'm going to actually flute the edge and thin it out even a little bit more. You can decide what it looks like. Clay's pretty forgiving. If you decide you don't like this look, you could probably pinch it back and it will be okay. Paddle it a few times with your spoon and you're good to go. I'm going to make a smaller size stem. You guys have a pretty good amount of clay there. It's about four pounds, so you can make several large. Um, you could make a bunch of small, and, or you could do a combination thereof, um, a small, medium, large. But um, look at your stems and look at your caps and just think proportionately. You don't want this giant stem with a little bitty baby cap. Um, think about your proportions. Test them out. Pop the cap on there just for a uh, look-see to make sure it's a good size for your stem. Now, something you can do to kind of keep the bowl, sometimes a pinch pot wants to open up really wide, but if you want one that's a little more a, a longer, oblong, you can paddle it. You can also, when you pinch it, kind of pinch and pull the edge towards the center. There we go. So that's a little, a little bit deeper. Now look around the house. The, I love using the back end of an eraser. It makes the best little polka dots. Check for pens, the back side of permanent markers. Some have really cool um, spoked design. Um, see what you have. I bet you'll be surprised. A Phillips head screwdriver makes a really cool star pattern. Kind of a X or a T. Um, looks, but it's small, so it looks kind of like a star. Mushroom cap, hooray. love making these. Look how I'm just squeezing it inside my hand and it makes this natural kind of skeletal looking um, vertebrae looking texture. Love making that. All I did was squeeze it really hard inside one hand and then move down to the next section. And for this cap, I'm going to probably leave some texture on that as well. Let's, let's see how we go here. I'll try to show you again how that, if you don't want it to get, be really wide opening, I'll show you how that happens. Yeah. All right, so you're just gonna keep making your parts. My dog has officially joined us to watch. He loves watching videos. Now, this is a pretty large amount of clay. Did you guys notice how I used the pencil? to push down inside there first. Kind of helps your fingers out a little bit. It's not so hard on your wrists. So I just pushed the pencil in and wiggled around and started the opening and then I went in with my fingers. Just a little helpful tip when you're using a larger amount of clay that can get a little tiring on your wrists. If you do this with kids, guys, this is such a great fine motor um, exercise. Um, pinch pots are the best of strengthening wrists and fingers and helping with writing skills.
Now this one I'm gonna flare out just a little bit. Make it look a little more bell shaped. So have fun with these different shapes. Gonna paddle it just a little bit. Now, if I also want to smooth this completely, if I don't want texture on here, I have a tool at the studio when you guys come in called a pottery rib, but you guys don't have that. So you can get a kind of a cheap movie card, you know, a rewards card, um, old credit card, and cut it in kind of a rounder shape, kind of a kidney bean shape. I'll show you one here in a moment. And that you can scrape along the side of your clay to smooth out the edges, but I'd wait, there it is. I'd wait just a little bit until it's a little bit firmer. Um, right now you're just gonna be kind of pushing clay around, but when it dries up a little bit, this really is a good tool to, to get really smooth, um, really smooth surface. All right, now watch this texture. This is just a pen where I've pulled in the nib and then I'm gonna press that right onto the clay. And <coughs> clearly the dog has entered the scene. All right, let's try that again, guys. I got rid of the dog. So I'm using the end of the pen to put in these cute little circles. Look at that, adorable. You can go all the way around Take a look around the house. See what fun textures you have. Earrings, pens, magic markers, so many different things. And then you guys can take a look at things you might want to add to the top of your mushroom. Look at this, a thin little coil. I'm going to bend it. Bend it. Pull up those little edges, and I've got a little inchworm. Oh, they can put on top of my mushroom. Remember... Um, when we put something on, you've got to scratch and score the bottom and you've got to scratch and score and water the thing you're attaching it to. Okay. It, um, both sides have to be scored and watered so it will stick. Now look at this. I'm using just a cute little coil and bending it to a V to make the little antenna. Scratching and scoring to attach those. A little bit of water needs to be involved when anything's getting attached. And then I'm just smearing it all together to make it look not like a bunny bug, but <laughs> I fixed him. He looked more like a bug at the end. There you go. So all kinds of things could go on these. Um, dragonflies, little ladybugs, butterfly. It could be really cute. The key is to scratch and score and adding water and really tearing it up. So the two pieces, it's like Velcro. So you have got two pieces of Velcro that will stick together. All right. And I'm going to just keep making parts to match up with my stems. Just check your proportions to make sure your cap fits your stem. You don't want to have a big giant cap on a little baby stem. I love this technique. I am just squeezing the stem with my fingers and it gives it kind of a skeletal, um, ribby look. It 
going to actually give that some dots as well. So this will be a really menacing looking garden mushroom. <laughs> Yeah, that looks cool. Now, if you guys notice, I'm going to actually start rounding out and kind of tapping flat and then giving it a little bit of a dome all the ends. You can use the table, your fingers, but you want to have a nice flat surface, kind of not even flat, but a little bit ever so slight of a dome for your mushroom cap to fit on there. When I when we fire, finally fire those and glaze them together, they'll be permanently attached, but we let the glaze do the attaching. So we've got to have a nice kind of rounded surface there for it to attach to the mushroom. Tap it on the table, smear it with your finger, and then kind of pat it with your finger to dome it out. get all those pieces now the most important part and you'll laugh because I actually did mine wrong you've got to get your three initials into all these pieces but don't do what I did I signed right on the top that's gonna actually end up being covered when I put the mushroom cap on so do don't do it on the flat bottom but do it somewhere on the side those I'm not going to see those when those are fired I don't know what I was thinking and the same for the mushroom caps rather than right in the middle don't do what I'm doing sign it more towards the edge with three good initials and really dig those in pretty well if you do it too lightly we can't see it once it's fired but get your initials into all the pieces again on the sides of the uh, maybe a side near the top so you don't see it once the mushroom caps on but you see it when we're identifying it. Three initials, please, or even a full name. That'll really help us, guys. That is the most important part. So we know it's your mushroom. I love that little bell-shaped one. So guys, we're gonna glaze these in really bright colors and kind of have fun with them. Um, it's gonna take about two to three weeks to get them all dried, fired in the first firing, and then glazed together. But we'll send you an email when it's ready for pickup. You can use the same scheduling link that you use to pick up your clay to drop off your pieces when you're finished. Hopefully we'll be getting closer to phase three where you guys can just drop them off when you want to soon. All right guys, have fun making these garden ornaments. Good job. Two thumbs up. Call me if you have any questions. Bye, guys.